What's up guys, so a lot of you are probably here from the last video that I did where I was talking about Coinbase Pro and how to automatically trade your cryptocurrency over on Coinbase Pro, taking advantage of those really low fees that Coinbase Pro is offering you versus regular Coinbase, but then also the ability to make recurring transactions on whatever schedule that you want, whether that's buying daily or weekly or even monthly. And so a lot of you might be aware that Coinbase Pro is going end of life and all of the features of Coinbase Pro, including these 0.4% maker fees are going to be available now over on regularcoinbase.com over here under trade and if you hit advanced. So here we have advanced trade and if I come over here to orders, you're gonna be able to see that I have gotten several different limit orders here with that 0.4% fee. And so now if you guys watch the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to automatically make these trades every day or every week or every month, whatever schedule that is gonna work best for you. I'm gonna be covering how to do all of that in this video. And if you're a recurring viewer, there are some important steps that are going to be different in this implementation versus something like the Kraken API or the Gemini API or any of the other cryptocurrency exchange APIs that we've done previously. And I'll make sure to call out those differences when they come up. So the first thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna come over to console.aws.amazon.com. And if you've never used AWS before, I'll have a link to it in the description. And then a video up in the cards that I did a while ago about how we use AWS for these cryptocurrency automations on this channel. The most important thing that you need to know is that for what we're using on this channel, this use of AWS is completely free, not just in the first year, but even after the first year. If we come into my billing page here, you can see that I'm using four different AWS services. And if we just go back through every single month, you'll see that there's absolutely no charge to using AWS in the way that we're using AWS right now. And so back on the home screen here, the first thing we're going to do is search up Lambda in the search bar and click on this right here, run code without thinking about servers. And if you've done another one of these tutorials before, normally this is where you would add a layer.zip, but actually in this tutorial, we don't need a layer.zip at all. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over to this big orange button that says create function. And we're going to call this function Coinbase advanced trade YouTube demo. And actually this time the runtime is going to be Python 3.9. It'll be x86.64. And then we'll scroll down here to create function. You can see it there, it's being blocked by my head but you'll just create the function. And obviously you'll be on author from scratch up here on create function. And it's gonna take a little while, but then you know eventually you should move on to this screen here. And the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna come up here to configuration. You're gonna click on configuration. You're gonna hit edit and then you're going to change your timeout to one minute and zero seconds, and then come down here to save. Now that you've increased the timeout, you're gonna come back over here to code and you're going to delete everything that's already in this code tab. Next, you're gonna head over to this GitHub gist link that I'll have linked down in the description. You're gonna highlight all of this code. You're gonna right click and copy, and then come over here and control V and paste. And you'll notice any time that you make a change to any of this code, it's going to tell you changes not deployed. So every single time that you make a change, you need to go ahead and click on deploy so that AWS can pick up the latest version of your code. So this is code that I wrote from scratch to interact with the Coinbase Advanced Trade API. And because there was no intermediate Python wrapper or anything like that, we're hitting the API at Coinbase directly. We don't need a layer.zip. So we've got all this code here and we're ready to start executing our limit orders. But the first thing we need to do is tie this code to our actual Coinbase accounts. And we're going to do that by filling in this API key and this API secret. And so if you come back to your Coinbase account, you're gonna come up to the top right and click on your little face and then click on settings. And then up at the top, you'll click on API. I don't know why it kicks me out of dark mode, but it's gonna bring you to this API keys page. And the first thing you're gonna do is click on new API key. And so for anyone who's done this before, the process here on you know, the new Coinbase API situation is a lot different than it was back on Coinbase Pro. On Coinbase Pro, there were three permissions. It was like transfer out, view account balances, and allowed to trade. And now over here on Coinbase, there's like a million permissions. And I find them all to be very confusing. And so do the people on the Coinbase forums. And so what I have been doing is, you know, if you know which coins you want to trade, you can individually select those wallets. But what I've been doing is just selecting all. And then even more confusing down here is this whole permission section, which there's documentation on this that I'll leave down in the description. 
but these things are very confusing and if you're just trying to get this to work, what I recommend is just selecting all at first. If you want to niche down and say like, okay, I want this API key to just be reading addresses and updating accounts and deleting accounts, I recommend that you start with everything and then start to remove features one by one, test your script and make sure that it still is working and doing what you expect it to do. Otherwise, you're going to run into errors that say, you know, forbidden, don't have permissions or unauthorized or something like that. And those are very frustrating. Coinbase doesn't really do a good job of telling you which permission you need that you don't have. And on top of that, the first time that I created these API keys, they told me that my API keys would not be valid for 48 hours. And so if you're trying to do this quickly, I recommend just clicking on all of these things, selecting all the permissions so you don't have to worry about your permissions stopping you from testing and running your code. And again, you can always niche down and remove permissions in the future if that's something that you're worried about from a security perspective. So you'll go ahead and select all of these and then scroll down and click on create. And so now we have a new API key and API secret. It is important to note that after I waited that first 48 hours to create these API keys, I am now allowed to apparently just create as many API keys as I want and I don't have to wait any time, I don't think. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try to use these API keys that I just generated here on camera for you. So let's go ahead and copy this API key here and we'll come back over to Lambda and we will paste the API key in API key, come back over to Coinbase, copy the API secret, come back over to Lambda, paste the API secret. And then we'll go ahead and click on deploy because obviously we did just make some changes. Lambda is going to tell us that we've successfully deployed our function. And so now we're going to scroll down here to the bottom under the Lambda handler function. And we'll talk about what changes we can make to the script to buy different amounts of different cryptocurrencies. The first important variable here is called my side. And that side is either going to say side.buy.net name or side.sell.name if you want to sell cryptocurrency instead of purchasing it, right? So I'm going to leave it as buy for now, but just know that if you wanted to sell, you would change that to sell. The next one that is important here is called my trading pair. Obviously, I'm setting this by default to Bitcoin US dollars, but if you're from Europe, you would set it as Bitcoin Euro or maybe Ethereum Euro or maybe Ethereum Bitcoin. You can really do whatever you want with this. And I have a blog post linked in the description that will show you every single trading pair that's currently available on Coinbase. So let's just leave this at Bitcoin US dollars for now. The next important variable is called USD order size. And by default, this is going to be $10, but you could change this to $100 or $1,000. And so in this case, this would buy $1,000 of Bitcoin. But if, for example, you were trading Ethereum BTC, this is no longer actually US dollars and this is now how many Bitcoin of Ethereum do you want to buy? So maybe you would buy something like, you know, half a Bitcoin of Ethereum or something like that. It gets kind of wonky when you're dealing with uh, weird trading pairs like this. So I'm just going to leave it to Bitcoin USD because I think that's how most people are going to be dealing with this script. Again, if it was like Bitcoin Euro, this $10 would not be dollars, it would actually be euros. The next important variable here is called factor. And this is basically what's allowing us to take advantage of those lower Coinbase fees on maker orders versus taker orders. So if you can see this Coinbase fees page here, it's saying that taker fees are 0.6% and maker fees are only 0.4%. And you can see back in my trades here, we can see that sometimes here I was getting the 0.4% maker fee and sometimes I was getting the 0.6% taker fee. You should always be getting the maker fee if you use the script, how it was written out of the box. But if you start to change variables around and mess with factor a little bit too much, you could end up getting the taker fee instead of the maker fee, which is what we're trying to avoid. So it's important that for buys, the factor is below one. And it's important that for sells, the factor is above one. If you came down here to the sell factor and you changed this to something that was below one, like 0.995, for example, this sell would execute immediately. And the same thing for buy, if you set it to something above one, it would execute immediately and you would be taking the taker order instead of the maker order. And then you would be getting the worst fee, which is what we want to avoid here, right? So let's leave them how they are for now. Just know that the closer they get to one, the faster the order is going to execute and the further away they get from one, the longer it's going to take, but the better price 
execution you're gonna get on your order. Next down here, we're doing some calculations so that we can set our limit price and our order size correctly. And then finally down here, we're actually placing the limit order. So let's go back into Coinbase and just see how much US dollars and how much Bitcoin I currently have. If we go over to my assets, we'll see that I currently have 25 US dollars and $3 of Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and place a buy order for $15. So if we come back over to our Lambda function, we can come up to USD order size, change this to 15, deploy our code. And then once it's successfully updated, we can click on test. And I'm just gonna call this test, uh, test here and event name. And I'm gonna scroll down and hit save. The first time you hit save here, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna say that your test event was successfully saved but then you'll click on test actually for the second time. And it's going to show you that your order has been placed. And so now if we head over to Coinbase and we click on advanced and we click on orders, we can see that I now have one open order for a little bit more than $15. Whenever you place an order, it's going to quote you the taker fee. And so this $15, probably 15 times 1.006, which is exactly right. It's quoting me the taker fee, but you'll see that when the order fills, I should be getting an order for $15 and six cents, which is, you know, $15 plus the maker fee of 0.4% here. All right, guys, so we're back here and the order has filled. You can see it down here in order history. And if we go ahead and click on this, you're gonna see that the fee is six cents. It was originally quoting us $15 and nine cents for the taker fee, but you can see that as it filled, we got the maker fee. And just to prove this out to you, if we do six cents over 15, that is 0.4%. And so just by using the script over here that we wrote in AWS, we were able to get that 0.4% trading. And so next, if we head back over to AWS, I'm gonna show you how you can automate this script every day or every week or twice a month or once every month, whatever schedule you want to run the script on so that it's automatically doing your dollar cost averaging for you. You don't have to log into Coinbase every day to place these orders. And we did cut there, but as you can see, we placed the order at 1829 and it was filled at 1831. So it did actually only take about two minutes for that order to be posted and then to totally fill. So now that we've seen how quickly those orders fill, let's come back here to AWS and we're just going to search for event bridge. And it's going to say serverless service for building event driven applications. And it should look something like this. So next over here on the right, we're going to go ahead and click on event bridge schedule and we're going to click on create schedule. We'll call this schedule Coinbase limit buys and you could make whatever description you wanted if yours does something else. So we'll scroll down here to schedule pattern and we'll click on read recurring schedule. And so here for most people, I think what you're going to want to do is just click on rate based schedule and you'll type in something like every one day or maybe every seven days or every 10 days. Or if you want to do this like a lot, you can do like every four hours or every one hour. Just be aware that when you select a rate based schedule, when you go ahead and submit this rule for the first time, that's going to be the first execution of the schedule. And so you'll click OK. It will buy whatever amount of Bitcoin you specified. And then in this case, three days from now, it would make another purchase of whatever you had specified back in that Lambda function. And for people who want a little bit more control over their schedule, you can use cron based scheduling and I'll have some popular cron expressions down in the description. But basically how this works is you define here in the cron expression how often you want something to run. So let's say we wanted it to run on the fifth minute of the 14th hour of the 15th and 30th day of the month every single month, we don't care what day of the week and every single year. And if you've given it a proper cron expression here, you will see the next 10 trigger dates populate down here. And so in the case of ours, the 15th and the 30th at 1405, you know, every single month, we're getting the 15th of January, the 30th of January, 15th of February, there is no 30th of February. So you have to be careful with stuff like this. So then it would be the 15th of March, the 30th of March. So you could leave it like this, or you could go back to rate based schedule. If you click on rate based schedule, you know, you can select off for flexible time window so that it's happening exactly every three days. And then you can scroll down here and probably leave this stuff alone. You don't really care about daylight savings time. So you can just go ahead and click on next. Now it's going to ask you once you've set up that schedule, what is it that you're trying to run? And you're obviously trying to run an AWS Lambda function that we just wrote. So you're going to click on Lambda down here and then when you scroll down to invoke, which Lambda function are you going to invoke? Well, we're going to invoke the one that we just wrote, which is Coinbase Advanced Trading YouTube Demo. 
and then we'll scroll down here to next. And then we can kind of ignore all of this and just go ahead and click on next again. Now it's asking us to review and create the schedule. And again, when we go to create the schedule right here, it's going to run our Lambda function an additional time. So if you are trying to buy something like $500 of Bitcoin or some significant amount of money, just be aware that when you click on create schedule here, it's going to execute for the first time. If you have a once every X days setup, obviously if you have a cron expression and today is not part of your cron expression, our cron expression that we had played around with was the 15th and the 30th. And today I'm recording this on the 14th. So if I clicked create schedule and I had a cron expression, it would obviously not run. So let's go ahead and click on create schedule. It's gonna go through and complete all of these steps. So it might take a while, but it will eventually bring you back here to the event bridge main page and you'll see that you have enabled your limit buys. And so that's all you have to do. Now this Lambda function that we wrote is going to get executed every three days. And if I ever wanted to come in here and disable it and stop it from happening every three days, I would just obviously search for event bridge again. I would come over here on the left to schedules. I would come down here to my list of schedules and I would click on Coinbase limit buys. And then I would just click on this disable button up here. And I am going to disable it because this was just for you know YouTube demo purposes. And then obviously if I wanted to enable it again, I could enable it or I could just delete the rule totally. And that's not going to delete your Lambda function. It's just going to delete the automatic scheduler. If you do just want to run it for one-off buys, you can just come in here to Lambda and totally ignore your Coinbase account if you wanted to. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. It is cool that we were finally able to get this working with Coinbase Advanced Trader now that Coinbase Pro is pretty much end of life. If you guys do have any questions or if you got stuck at any point in the video, definitely go down below and leave a comment or DM me over on Twitter and I will be able to help you better over on Twitter because we'll be able to exchange screenshots. Just make sure not to ever share your API key with me or anyone else. If my Twitter ever got hacked and my DMs were leaked or something like that and your API key got out there, people would be able to trade on your behalf. So it is really important not to share your API keys with anyone. Additionally, I'm never going to ask for your API keys. So if someone, you know, says, hey, send me your API keys, uh, that person is a scammer or they're impersonating me no legitimate person would ever have a reason to see your API keys. If this content was helpful for you guys, please go down below and smash the like button. It's gonna help YouTube spread this video around and show people you know, what is the best way to be using Coinbase now that Coinbase Pro is offline. I personally think it's kind of ridiculous that they have you know, two separate ways of purchasing cryptocurrency, one that's super high fee and one that is you know, relatively low fee. But then when you use this relatively low fee option, they don't allow you to do those recurring buys that they allow you to do on the super high fee option. And so it's sort of been my mission with these videos to just get the message out and show people that it is possible to get the best of both worlds if you are willing to just do a little bit of setup. Because once you've set this up one time, it is truly a set it and forget it solution. With that being said, we didn't cover deposits or withdrawals in this video. And I think to be a totally like holistic version of, you know, what we want it to be, we want money to enter our checking accounts from our jobs or from, you know, whatever work we're doing. We want that money to automatically be deposited to a platform like Coinbase Pro. We want those purchases to happen automatically. And then we want the withdrawals to be automatically processed to something like a Ledger Nano S Plus or a Cold Card Mark IV, a totally offline hardware wallet where we can take custody of the coins that we're buying on Coinbase. And so if you guys are interested in that, definitely leave a comment down below and subscribe to the blog. I'll leave a link to that down in the description also. And I'll be working on the code to automate deposits and withdrawals into Coinbase. And when it pairs with this video, we should get a totally holistic solution that's fully automating our cryptocurrency purchases. That's it for today, guys. I love you all. Goodbye.